The Bucks just added Damian Lillard, so naturally Boston responded by trading for the player who arguably defends him better than anyone. Drew Holiday is known for his perimeter defense, but there's so many more layers to his game, and I think some of the skills he offers on both ends can really elevate the Celtics to another level. Holiday is probably the best point of attack defender in the NBA right now, someone you can just throw on pretty much every team's lead ball handler and expect good results. First, it's the ball pressure. He'll pick up initiators as far out as full court, and because of his agility, he can slide in front of any quick change of direction or crossover, just changing how possessions start. His hands are ridiculously disruptive out in space like this. White looks to attack off the catch on a left-hand drive, and because Drew's so quick, he can both shut off the angle and attack the ball to force a turnover. He'll generate a lot of steals through this method of sliding in front of driving lanes, blocking with his body, and swiping at the ball. Oladipo's only able to get one dribble down, and he's already pouncing. The sharpness and activity in his hands also allow him to take away seemingly routine passes while pressuring the ball. The defense is out of position after a jump ball, so when he chases down Emmanuel quickly, that leaves Jalen Brunson unattended at the top of the key except the ball never gets there because Holiday already made that read. Lateral quickness and elite hands are two traits that can make a guy nearly impossible to beat in perimeter isolation. Everything becomes that much harder when your handle has to be on a string, and no matter what angle you look to attack, he'll remain right in front every step of the way. This is something that's always helped him bother Kevin Durant, despite a 6 inch difference in height. The way he gets up in his airspace and dictates where he dribbles the ball forces him to live on a diet of shots over the top, which he'll contest with some pretty nice timing. But then he can also hold his own just as effectively against the much shiftier Kyrie Irving, moving his feet and swiveling his hips to close off any potential lanes, absorbing contact to the chest and holding his position before completely smothering a fallaway jumper. Of course, applying that much aggressive pressure on the ball puts him in a more vulnerable position to get blown by, but even when he is beat off the dribble, those quick hands allow him to make plays from behind. These are all things that you can find in many elite isolation defenders. Now, where I think Drew separates himself from the pack is with his strength. Cutting off attack angles with quick feet is one thing, but remaining in position when players try to initiate contact or throw shoulders to the chest is another, and he happens to be elite in both departments. That really stands out when he's forced to defend in the post. It's like Kristaps Porzingis is trying to back down a brick wall, making no ground whatsoever, and sometimes it's easy to forget that he's a 6'4 guard. Maybe Perzingis isn't the best example because his center of gravity is pretty weak, so what about a much sturdier Luka Doncic? Drew just plants his feet and stonewalls his attempt to touch the paint, forcing him to rely on a much tougher look over the top that doesn't even come close to falling. So if no matter what an offensive player does, he just can't shake his defender, the natural reaction would be to call for a screen, right? Well, in the case of Drew, he just so happens to navigate those as well as anyone. You'll have possessions where he's glued to his matchup like the screen just doesn't even exist at all. Booker uses this one from 8 and 3 different times, only for Drew to go to one of his signature pickpockets. Because Jimmy isn't much of a 3 point shooter, when Love comes to set a screen, he's going to take an angle under it that beats the ball to the paint. And when Butler tries to exploit that open space by dropping the shoulder, Holiday just takes that bump and attacks the ball. He's got every trick in the book when it comes to dodging picks. This time, there's no angle for him to squeeze over the top and stay attached to Durant, so he's going to spin under it so that he can stay in front of the ball, sticking with him all the way into the paint where Brooke Lopez is waiting to help. Just like in isolation, even if ball handlers are able to turn the corner around screens and get the step on him going downhill, he's capable of making plays on the ball in recovery. And when they play a more patient game, looking to put him in jail, he's also good at making his presence felt then, staying on Brunson's hip as he funnels the ball into Lopez, and as soon as that momentum is stopped, he slides back in front, doesn't bite on the up fake, and completely takes away a potential mid-range jumper. It's not just his own individual matchup that he's taking away either, because in these spots he's also tracking the screener and making passes more difficult. 
Harden comes off the screen and is met with Lopez and drop, and Drew on his hip, so he thinks the pass to Embiid is easily available, but Holiday gets a hand on it, resulting in a turnover. Boston's a team that likes to drop a lot of pick and rolls, especially with both of their bigs in Horford and Porzingis maximized within that coverage, and I think Drew's ability to navigate screens, stick with ball handlers no matter what they try to do, and also make getting the ball to rollers more difficult allows them to run these looks a lot more, kind of like what we saw in Milwaukee during their last three playoff runs. In the rare event that Holiday is hit by a hard screen that takes him out of the play, that's when you'll see him switch, and again because of the lower body strength, he typically doesn't have much of a problem when it comes to holding his own against bigs. This is a skill of his that I don't think really got maximized when playing for the Bucks, because they typically ran schemes that avoided switching as much as possible, but Boston's the exact opposite. They actively look to switch as a method of preventing advantages, so I think we'll see his versatility pop a bit more. That's not to say it didn't already, because you can just go back and watch different Milwaukee games for a feel on just how many different archetypes and positions he's capable of covering. Just in 2023, you'll find games where he's matched up with guys like Dame, Steph, or Trey Young, I mentioned KD, but then you'll see him matched up with Zion, LeBron, Siakam, or Julius Randle and doing just as good, and I'm not sure how many players in the league you can comfortably say that about. Then there's also the off-ball component. Some guys like to run off of screens or handoffs more than actually create from a standstill, and he'll affect those guys as well. Again, it's just about knowing which angles to take around screens and how to close space. His first instinct is to chase Durant over the top, but he quickly recognizes that it's a bit clogged, so he instead darts under, and by the time KD gets the ball, he's already back out at the perimeter getting a hand up. Here's one where Booker uses a flare screen, and instead of looking to shoot, he immediately puts it down on an attack, but Drew's able to recover from behind and eat up a mid-range J. When it comes to disrupting one individual matchup, Holiday's as good as it gets. He can switch 1 through 4 because of agility, strength, and overall perfect technique, screens don't affect him, and his motor is off the charts. But what about the team defense? His hands are really disruptive and allow him to make plays on seemingly basic rotations. Here he takes one step down from the corner to tag a roll and just completely blows up the action but I think his awareness does lack quite a bit in comparison to what you'd expect from a defender of his caliber. Here he gets caught watching the ball so he's out of position on a closeout, and that ultimately leads to a breakdown. On this one, he's the first help defender one pass away, and with the middle of the floor open, I think he could have done a better job of protecting the nail, but instead doesn't really make much of an effort to slide over, so Lowry's able to walk into a floater. With that said though, Holiday does make some really nice reads for high leverage plays. Embiid fakes Lopez off the floor and puts it down on a drive, and Holiday rotates over from the wing to shut off the lane with those sharp hands. This is one where he's forced to protect the weak side as Luka collapses the defense, meaning he has two shooters to cover, so he's going to play in between them as he patiently waits to see what Doncic does with the ball, and ultimately jumps into a lane for a steal. I think by replacing Marcus Smart, you lose some of the traits you get with a defensive quarterback. High level rotations behind the play, communication, and elite positioning. But Drew gives you more on the ball, and I think that's a decent trade off. With the loss of not only Smart, but also Grant and Rob Williams, I do definitely think the team as a whole isn't quite as good defensively. But then again, it depends on the matchup. Considering Milwaukee's the team to beat now that they've got Dame, I'd make the argument that having a screen navigator at the point of attack like Holiday is as important as it gets, and I think his switchability still brings a ton of lineup flexibility to the table. As for the offensive side of things, well I personally feel like Drew is one of the hardest players in the NBA to evaluate. On one hand you have the regular season, where every indicator points to him being an all-star caliber player. And then you have the playoffs, where he's just been nowhere near the same level. So how do we balance that out? The first thing is the outside shooting. Since 2021, he's hit 39% of his pull-up threes, 42% of his catch-and-shoot threes, and 43% of his wide-open threes. Those aren't just marks you'd expect from a good shooter, but one of the very best in the NBA. 
yet in the playoffs, he's barely been able to clear 30%, and I think there are some things that can help explain the drop. For one, he's very clearly expending way more of his energy at the point of attack. Playing nearly 40 minutes a game and chasing guys around screens takes a toll on the body, and I just simply think he doesn't have legs on his shot. Another thing is his shot selection. He takes a lot of threes early in the clock, from extended range, or in transition, and those just aren't always good looks. And finally, I'd argue that Milwaukee overtasked his offensive duties due to a lack of ball handling talent on the roster. Over the past three years, he's been consistently hovering around 83 to 87 touches a game in the playoffs, which is just way too much and what you'd typically expect from more heliocentric players. He was genuinely asked to be his team's primary half-court creator, which just doesn't work, and this is something that I think can be mitigated with the Celtics roster. Guys like Tatum and Brown offer that half-court scoring punch, and you've got guys at multiple positions who are comfortable putting the ball down and making plays in Derek White, Porzingis, and Al Horford, so I think he can play a bit more of a team-oriented role. With that, I'd expect some better shooting percentages and overall efficiency. As for the rest of his attack, I think he struggles with pace at times, and doesn't get to the free throw line at all, so his efficiency does have a bit of a cap, but he's got a pretty nice in-between game, is a good finisher around the rim, and because of his size will absolutely abuse mismatches when given the opportunity. Again, considering that Milwaukee is the team to beat, a backcourt of Damon Beasley won't cut it against Holiday's physicality. The biggest thing with Drew though, is that Boston finally has the table setter and high quality initiator that they've been needing for years. Smart was a great passer, Tatum and Brown great scorers, but it's been a while since they've had a guy who can consistently do both, and that's what Drew gives you. He can apply pressure to multiple levels and out of various different plays, and is capable of making high leverage passes without turning the ball over at a high rate. Someone who can get Boston into their offense consistently, deal with pressure, and just offer some more perimeter creation should take the offense to another level, even with some of his deficiencies. You pair that with the defense, and I think it's a pretty massive add. Drew's consistently been one of the most underrated two-way players in the game, and barring injury, I'd argue that the Celtics have a great claim as the best starting lineup in the NBA. Their depth, still a pretty massive question mark but if they can find a way to fill out their roster with a few more quality pieces, they're right there with the best of the bunch as a top tier contender. If you enjoyed this breakdown, make sure to drop a like, subscribe, and turn my post notifications on to be first on more content. If you're interested in my more in-depth research, make sure to check out my website and social media profiles. You can find those links in the description. Feel free to let me know down in the comments what you think of the trade. As always, I hope you all have a great day and I'll catch you guys in the next one.